Hunter Biden, to bring up another yeah. aspect of the Biden administration, clearly a deeply corrupt person. Yeah. He put his dad on the phone 20 times, we're told, with the people he was sucking up to in various aspects. He clearly used his dad's name constantly to gin up contracts for work that he didn't really deserve. And, and so that much, I don't think is that much in debate at this point, except how much Joe Biden knew about that, how much he enabled it. Now, let's say he he, he was too uh, probably too smart to get involved in any bullshit like that with some Ukrainian business people or whatever. But say he just allowed his son to use his name, allowed his son to call him up and put him on the speakerphone when he, his son was talking to other mm. people. Isn't that corruption? Well, so look, first of all, I think a key piece of context here is that in some instances, he told his father, you know, hey, I'm here with so-and-so and so-and-so. And then on others of those calls, he just called his father and made no indication that he was in a room with other people. So I think it's when, and you can see in other co coverage related to Hunter Biden and Hunter Biden's difficulties with drugs and the law and various other things, the extreme solicit solicitousness with which his his father and his stepmother and the rest of his family have treated him. The The president goes above and beyond to show people how close he is emotionally to Hunter. And whenever Hunter is, is brought up, he, he gives this very robust, probably too robust defense of his son and talks about how proud he is. And I think that that's a reflection of, you know, frankly, the emotional terrorism that Hunter has wrought on his own family. And you can see this in his memoir, the stories about, you know, they, they, they gather all at the house at Delaware in, in Delaware trying to get him to go to rehab yet another time. And he basically scams his way out of the house and gets on a plane to L.A. and goes on another bender after getting them to agree to send him to rehab, but not the specific rehab they had picked. I think that they are deeply afraid of their son relapsing or dying, and it has caused them to be very indulgent of his behavior and in some cases too indulgent. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that the, every choice that the president has made in that respect has been correct, but I think they are very understandable from the perspective of having to deal with someone in your family who has not only a serious addiction, but a, a really serious behavioral problem. I mean, the, the craziness of the, of the affair that he had with his late brother's widow and, you know, what that did to that whole family, he behaves reprehensibly. And in a way that is very challenging for people who are close to him and who love him. And I think that, you know, when you have the president who has, you know, has had all of this tragedy in his life and had lost his, his other, you know, much more successful son to cancer at such a young age and losing his wife and, and child in a car accident, I, I think that even though he should have handled this differently, I think that, you know, as they were watching Hunter develop this career such as it was, and clearly getting political pressure from other people in the Obama White House, you know, do something about this. I suspect he was reluctant to take a hard line with his son for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, I'm not sure that Hunter would have even listened to him. So, like, suppose Joe Biden goes to Hunter and says, hey, stop trading on my name. What the fuck are you doing? This is very embarrassing for all of us. It's corrupt. Hunter could have gone on and done it anyway. So is Joe Biden then supposed to make some sort of public statement? about how his son is, you know, is behaving in this corrupt manner and, you know, should stop acting like people, you know, like, like he has influence with him. Should he stop taking, you know, he's clearly part of, part of their strategy for managing Hunter seems to be clearly having been, you know, as being available to him at all times, despite being vice president of the United States. And so, you know, if you're to, to make sure that your, that your son is never calling you in the presence of other, of other people, the shady people he's doing business with, do you like, do you quiz him whenever he gets on the phone about whether he's in the presence of any sh shady Ukrainian businessmen? Do you stop taking his calls? I mean, I think that sort of the assumption that Hunter would have been cooperative with an effort to put Hunter in a box, I think is, I, I, I think is unfounded. And I, and I furthermore think that, you know, the, I think the, the president probably, the then vice president probably had very real fears about the way that his husband, that his son might respond so he, to anything. He put, that, up, with, so, he put so, up with the corruption because he thought he couldn't actually bring an end to it. I think, I, I mean, it's, it's sort of the same as putting... Because here's, here's the one thing I would say. I mean, I take all your points. Yeah. They're, they're, they're good points. Yeah. And they're important to see. And I think all of that is valid. 
What I yeah. don't understand is that a few days after a WhatsApp message comes out, which shows clearly that Hunter was trading on his father's name. In fact, using his father's leverage for money. If we don't get this money now, my dad is going to talk to you. I, I'm paraphrasing the WhatsApp message. Two days later, he's invited to the state dinner. Now, that's, that's just telling people to go fuck themselves. 